The first nine axioms in the definition of the real number system are commonly referred to as the field axioms. The reason they're called the field axioms is that there are a lot of different mathematical systems that obey this set of axioms, not just the real numbers. We also have the rational numbers, the, the complex numbers, the set of rational functions. All of these obey the field axioms. And in the early 1800s, mathematicians were studying the behavior of all of these mathematical systems in a sort of abstract way and we're looking for a way of describing them. In 1871, the German mathematician Richard Dedekind suggested the word Zeilenkorper, Zeilen being the German word for number, and Korper roughly translating into English as the word body. It's more similar to the word corpus, meaning a sort of closed body of knowledge. In 1893, there was an American mathematician named E.H. Moore who suggested translating this into English rather than as a, a body of numbers, as a field of numbers, sort of like a, a body of knowledge being, being a field of knowledge. However, not every mathematical system that obeys these axioms is a system of numbers. For example, the set of rational functions also obeys these axioms, but rational functions can't really be called numbers. And so today we just call these things fields. In any case, let's have a look at what the field axioms tell us about the real numbers. <laughs> We can break up the first eight of the field axioms into two groups of four. The first four apply to addition, and the second four are the exact same axioms but applied to multiplication. Looking at axioms A1 and M1, we see that both addition and multiplication are what we call commutative. This means the order doesn't make any difference. If we add x plus y, this is the same as adding y plus x, and similarly for multiplication. The next pair, axioms A2 and M2, tell us that both binary operations are what we call associative. This tells us how we can add or multiply three numbers. If we have a set of three numbers and we want to add them, this axiom tells us that it doesn't matter which two we add first. We can group the first two and add that sum to the third, or we can add the first number to the sum of the second two. It doesn't make any difference. And axiom M2 says the same thing about multiplication. The next pair, axioms A3 and M3 tell us the behavior of our two constants 0 and 1. A3 tells us that the number 0 is the additive identity. What this means is if we add any number to 0, it just returns that number. And axiom M3 tells us the same thing about multiplication and the number 1. The number 1 is what's called the multiplicative identity, meaning that if we multiply any number x by 1, it just returns the number x. And finally, the last pair, axioms A4 and M4, tell us about the behavior of our two unary operations. A4 tells us that the negative of x is the additive inverse of x. This means that if we add x to its negative, it returns the additive identity, 0. Similarly, axiom M4 tells us that the inversion operation gives us the multiplicative inverse of a number. In other words, for any non-zero number x, if we multiply x and its inverse, it returns the multiplicative identity 1. Finally, the ninth field axiom tells us about the interaction between our two binary operations, addition and multiplication. It tells us that multiplication distributes over addition. In other words, if we want to multiply x by a sum, y plus z, we get the same thing as if we had multiplied x by y and z individually at the start and then added the results. It's important to note that the distributive law should be read in two directions, that it tells us, reading it from left to right, that we can expand multiplication over addition, but it also tells us, reading it from right to left, that if we see a common factor in two terms that are being added, we can factor out the common number, for example, if we see x times y plus x times z sharing the common factor x, we can factor out that common x and write it as x multiplied by the sum y plus z. In this way, the distributive law allows us to both expand and to factor. Mm -hmm.